Hey guys, um, I'm, I'm making this uh, I'm making this vlog for you guys because um, I think it's time to tell my story to you guys. Um, there has been a lot of questions about the breakup, about uh, why there were comments on any pictures, assuming things. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, we chose to make our relationship public and put it out there on social media like this. So I think I'm obligated to, to watch you guys to actually, actually tell my story. I met Tavi when I was working behind the bar and I was looking for a personal trainer. Uh, that's how I got to know him. That's how I suddenly fell in love with him um, because he was a very hardworking, genuine, very sweet, um, religious person. But in the end, I'm going to tell you the true story that went on behind the social media facade. So quickly after he started training me, um, we started to build the company into a brand name instead of just an online coaching brand. Um, and that's when I turned down an internship for a uh, forensic lab technician because that was what I was wanting to study. But I realized that uh, body engineers had a lot of chance to succeed. So that's why I kind of wanted to spend all my time on that. And I started to work uh, with printing the shirts and everything. It felt amazing to, to work towards a goal like that together, to have the same dream. But um, in the end, it definitely came with a price because the first one and a half year, all the money that we made, we just put back into the company. Um, so we didn't have any salary or anything. Uh, we were just, we were just uh, getting by. But then whenever there was a small fight or something, it would have been held ab above my head that I was living in his house, under his roof, eating the food that he paid for, driving in his car. For an example, there was a moment that I was uh, that we got into a fight and I went grocery shopping and he emptied the account just to make me look like a fool when I tried to pay the grocery shopping and the card declined. Soon I uh, found out that it didn't really matter how hard I would work uh, because it was never enough. I could always do better. I could always come with something new that I should do or work harder. As soon as that, that started to happen and the company started to grow, our relationship suffered extremely from it. And the social media image became more important than our actual life. And uh, we were just trying to keep everything together. And besides working together, being 24 seven together in the company uh, that was first in our house, we, we just really tried to make everything work. And then kind of fast forward to 2015, um, I found out that Tavi cheated on me with a competitor athlete from a different clothing company in my office where I had to come work every day. You might remember the pictures of Lazar, me, Tavi and Janita in Amsterdam having fun. Well, those were the days that I found that out and that I had to keep smiling and appear to be happy while in a time length of four days, every day I found out something new about that situation. Um, as soon as I spoke about it, it just got thrown back at me that it was my fault for not being a loving enough person within the relationship. I wanted to, I wanted to forgive him because this was the guy that I was looking at spending the rest of my life with. I thought about having his children. I imagined how we, if we would already rock like, a, like in business that we could just, as soon as the business was on point, that we would be better and everything. So I forgave him. So right after this, we decided to go on a one and a half month trip um, just to try to save our relationship and uh, this is when I started to get real bad panic attacks from all the stress. Um, meanwhile, we're posting on social media that we're completely happy holding hands on the beach. While in real life I was 
struggling with trying to forgive him and struggling because my panic attacks were getting worse and worse. Because of the panic attacks, I locked myself in the house for a week and the only time that we went out is actually to make these pictures because we were keep fighting over that we needed content while we were here or else it was a waste of time. While the only thing that I could think of is how uh, how was I gonna supposed to live like this with all this panic inside of me and all this stress and I just didn't know what to do with it. Then we went to Vegas and we were spending a couple of days there and uh, at night we got into a fight and he decided that he was gonna go to a strip club that I found out at four o'clock in the morning that he was there all night alone. And the next day we flew back to Amsterdam and that's the day when he proposed to me on the airport in Amsterdam in front of my family, my friends, in front of the whole social media because he told everyone about it on it on Snapchat, on Instagram. And the only thing that I could think of is that it was only one and a half months after he cheated on me and that I wasn't, I haven't completely forgiven him yet. And while my heart screamed no, because of everything that happened, I did say yes, because I was driven in a corner, standing in front of everyone. And I just couldn't do that to him. So then you're engaged. You're, everybody's congratulating you on your engagement and nobody knows what's up nobody knows what's actually going what's going on behind closed doors and i have to pretend this super happy person that i got engaged while I felt terrible inside we were the perfect fit couple in everyone's eyes then the next couple of months my anxiety just got worse and worse and worse and until the point that Davi got so upset with everything because he didn't understand it that he would just tell me that the only place that he would bring me to right now is a doctor and to go fix myself and the worst thing of anxiety is that when you don't completely fully understand it yourself yet and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you that the people closest to you where you kind of depend on in that moment to help you they, they just belittle you and make it worse, they not understanding is one thing, but not wanting to understand or be there for you. That's a whole different thing. This was the moment that it was just my breaking point. I told him that I couldn't go on with this relationship anymore um, because there have been moments that he embarrassed me in front of people with my insecurities. Um, I'm very insecure about my voice. I always disliked my voice and he would throw that at me in front of other people. I haven't been the best partner in a relationship and I've done, I've, I've done stuff wrong. I haven't loved him enough at certain moments that he needed it, but I've always been loyal to him. In the three years I was with him, I never cheated on him, despite what he might try to say to you guys on social media. When I told him that I didn't, I couldn't go on anymore, he tried for a little bit, um, really hard to get me back, but I just, I couldn't do it anymore because I was just emotionally shut off. And that's when he snapped. He started throwing all my stuff on the floor in the house. He just took everything out of my closet and started to throw it on the floor and told me to get the fuck out of the house. This is when I got so afraid that I was trying to call anyone to come help but it was six in the morning and I was on the I was on the edge of calling 911 but I didn't want to take it that far so I just waited finally when he left I got my stuff together and I left the house just to get out of that situation I just wanted to escape that situation after that I just uh, started sleeping on on my friend's couches sleeping at my mom's and then driving for two hours to the office because I didn't want to not be on time because then he might fire me. So at one point I started to sleep on the couch in the office and all the employees would come in in the morning and see me crawling off the couch. And 
until there was a moment that he told me that I wasn't even worth it to sleep on the couch. That was the moment that I was about to sleep in my car and that was also the moment that one of his friends said to me, okay, come sleep here because I can't let you go sleep in your car. I've always been too proud to ask anyone for help, but that was one of the most embarrassing things in my life. Then I found a then I found a house that was completely empty without a floor, so I still had to get everything in there. Um, and I only had a mattress, so I started sleeping on a mattress on a concrete floor. And this is right around the time that Tavi was in Brazil having a fun time and didn't want to give me any of the furniture because in his mind I made I bought the furniture with the money that I made from body engineers. So that makes the furniture his, even though I bought it a month before that we moved in there. So while he was having a great time in Brazil with his friends, I was sleeping on the floor, having nothing, having to start over with everything. I didn't have a plate to eat from, I didn't have a glass to drink from. I literally had to start all over again. He even told me that if I would give the engagement ring back, he would consider and see if it was in his nature then to forgive me and give me my bed, or at least the extra bed that we had in the spare room. He took Yuki from me when he threw me out of the house and told me that I can't have Yuki because now I'm a homeless person and he doesn't want Yuki to not have a house. So, that was, so probably one of the hardest things was uh, when he threw me out of the house and I was gathering my stuff from the floor to put it in a suitcase, that Yuki came to me and he picked Yuki up and he literally took him from me because how much he a person can say that because you bought a dog it's yours I took care of Yuki I took care of his fur for four to five hours a week I walked him three times a day I fed him I played with him he was my baby so when he left for to go to Brazil then I could have Yuki because nobody else could take care of him. But right now he has him and because I want to start living here in LA, he doesn't want to give Yuki back. So then when he came back from the trip, he, uh, he was in a car accident. And He tried to blame it on me in a national magazine or an online article, in the quote it's called. And he said in that article that because of the breakup and everything that came with it and that I, because now I was, he made me into who I am right now and now I'm making 10 to 15k a month um, and that's that's why now I left him and he was so broken up because of it, that's why he got into the accident. I think it's very good that they didn't take a blood test. It wasn't my fault that he had an accident. About to 10 to 15K, that's not what I make a month. In the last year, I was making 1500 euros with body engineers. And the rent was, for example, already 1100 each. And he always just said that the rest of the things and utilities and all of those things I could just pay from the money that I earned through my sponsor. He helped me with marketing. He helped me with my making my pictures. He helped me uh, with... He taught me how to work with Photoshop to design. But the designs that I made are my creativity. It's what I... It's what I draw. It's me in the pictures, it's me working on my body, it's me trying to be motivational for you guys and 
I give him credit for how much he helped me, but he didn't make me. I wasn't a sad person without a future, with a burnt face that wanted to be a model. Yes, I have third degree burns in my face. I had five skin transplants in my face. Yes, I'm very insecure about that. But it never stopped me from achieving my things that I wanted in life. We came to the point that he's, he needed to approve the pictures that I had to post for body engineers. And because he never wanted to... Tavi never wanted to give me any shares in the company. He always just told me that if I would marry him, we'll be fine. And that's why I was always just an employee instead of the person that helped to build the company. And now we're at the point where I had a contract as an athlete and as a designer, but he started to disapprove of every picture that I send in uh, to post. He started to make new rules for how I should deliver my designs. And now we're at the point that he just didn't pay me, started, he didn't pay me out anymore. And that's why I completely withdraw from body engineers right now. I just want to put it out there that I give him one thing, he does an exceptional job in pretending to be this humble, kind-hearted person. It's just too bad that in actual life it's not like that. I've been quiet until now because I just wanted everything to go away and I wanted to start rebuilding my life again but I was also quiet because I was scared because he was taking everything from me but right now I'm not scared any anymore because he did take everything from me he took my house, he took my furniture, he took my job, he took my dog he took my Facebook the Facebook with over 600k followers is owned by him he took everything, he tried to let me be kicked off of shreds I mean, I have not been the perfect girlfriend. I might have not been the loving person that I should have been within the relationship. But I sure as hell don't deserve this. I have to start everything again right now. Where I worked so hard for, for three years is completely gone. But right now, the only thing that I can still save is my name. And that's what I'm doing with this, because you guys deserve the truth. It's been an extreme roller coaster of emotions for the last three years. And all I want to do right now is let you know my side of the story.